Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. We have to check this out. Candace Owens is a GOAT. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let's go. Media says we're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be scared to be in this room, right? But we're here anyways. We are all here and we should be so proud of ourselves for standing up to the media bullies and showing up today. You know, I have to tell you guys, I, um, I started this morning like I always, I start every morning and um, I want to really take a serious moment to talk about something that pulled at my heartstrings this, this morning and, and almost brought me to tears as I was reading uh, the news. I was reading a story about a young boy named Tyshawn Lee. Um, a name that people won't be familiar with, not a name that spread all across the nation instantly. Um, Tyshawn Lee uh, was a nine-year-old boy uh, living in Chicago. He left his grandmother's house because he wanted to go play basketball in the park. And he was playing basketball by himself in the park. Uh, Tyshawn Lee was approached by an adult man uh, who came up to him playfully and grabbed the ball and began playing with him. And then eventually this older adult man lured him away from the park uh, with the promise that he would take him to the store and, and buy him whatever he wanted. So he followed this adult man into an alleyway and he was instantly, Tyshawn Lee at nine years old, shot point blank uh, a few times and murdered. He was murdered, uh, it was gang related. They were after his father, so this was, con this was a gang hit to go after this young boy. Disaster, an absolute sad, sad disaster that brought tears to my eyes because uh, he was only in the fourth grade. You know, unbeknownst to most of this world, this story happened and the reason that we don't know about it, the reason that there was no wall-to-wall -wall coverage and national sensation about this story by the people who, who claim to care about the senseless ending of black lives is simply because it didn't fit the media narrative. That's it. He was killed by another black man. So it didn't fit the media narrative to be outraged about this story. Black-on-black -black crime is something that our media tells us that we're not allowed to talk about. Over 93% of black homicide victims are killed by other black people. But we are not supposed to be outraged, and we're not told to remember the names of those victims. Because if we begin to focus on that area, something that is causing real harm and devastation to our communities, we might uncover the truth. And that's, the truth is that this is all by Democrat design. Our inner cities are all by Democrat design, like Chicago, like Baltimore, and like Detroit. They have been run by Democrats for decades. We have been made to believe that the conditions in our cities are normal. We're supposed to turn a blind eye to the corruption, to the crime, to the gangs, and instead focus on what our media deems of more importance. We are instead told that we should be focusing on white people. We're supposed to be reactive and angry and fearful about white supremacy when in fact, it is liberal supremacy that is harming our communities. I say this all the time. You show me a neighborhood where there are liberal policies that reign supreme, and I will show you a neighborhood where black Americans are struggling in this country. For decades, we have been disrespected by the Democrats. We have empowered their party, lined the pocket of their politicians, and we have gotten positively nothing in return for our blind allegiance and faithfulness. I've recently begun to, to immerse myself, as I told you all yesterday, in old videos and interviews of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And um, I came across an interview of him from 1964 where he was underscoring the problems that were in black America.